Aren't you glad you're in the house of God this morning? Amen. God is going to do great things. He's already been doing great things. We we're excited about what uh, he's doing. I'm excited what, to hear the praise reports of answered prayers. Even this week there came uh, over email uh, testimonies of God's, the prayers of God's peoples being answered. And uh, as we gather like this, I anticipate God answering prayers. Uh, he's faithful. I've seen it over and over again. Put up your hand if you've seen God answer prayers, just as a testimony. Oh, look at all the hands all around this place. So take courage today. If you came with a prayer request this morning, that you, ta- you have a need in your life that he will overcome by the power of his blood, by the power of his name. We can, we can expect answers. And so I am anticipating that. Make sure you share those answers. We just want to rejoice with you. Today we're starting a brand new sermon series. I'm always, uh, that's always exciting for me as well because I know that God is speaking to his people. Uh, you might kind of wonder, how do they come up with, with sermon series? As often it's a, it's a matter of prayer. Pastor Bob and myself, we're, we, we're seeking God. God, what are you saying to your church? What do you really want to us to, to gather? And I was just so excited to hear, uh, you know, testimonies. The last series as we, as we talked about, uh, you know, just the unity and in the body and how important it is that, you know, that we celebrate diversity, you know, and, and, and just... You know, I just saw God doing some great things, and it was just great to, to remember that, that heaven is going to be, you know, just a beautiful place of diversity because God has created so much diversity. And, and I'm excited about this sermon series because I believe God wants to speak to us and to, uh, and to challenge our hearts to be the church he's called us to be. And you may have noticed that there are a few little additions up on the platform here. We've added a few just little lights they are just kind of symbols for this series that we're in because we're calling this series Shine. So the series is Shine. Let your light shine. How many of you grew up with that little song? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bush. Oh, I'm going to let it. You got the idea. I won't sing the whole thing, but, you know. It's amazing how we remember that. You know, when was the last time I sang that? It was probably seven or something. But, uh, you know, that's a song that, it, it's a truth. It's a, it's a truth of God's word that he wants us to, to get into us, that, that we are to shine, not hide our lights under a bush. Oh, thank you. Uh, we're not supposed to do that. We are to shine. And, you know, no person in history probably shines more, uh, in my opinion, than the Lord Jesus Christ. He shone, the Bible calls him the light of the world. He came into this dark, and even if you are not a believer or follower of Jesus, you probably realize there's something different about this Jesus. There is a reason that so many people throughout the course of history, and even today, gather like this and worship his name. There is a reason that he stands out in history. And that is because he came into this dark, dark world to shine. And volumes of books have been written about this one called Jesus. And the place that he is most beautifully talked about, and we actually read his words, are the Gospels. And if you take time to get to know my Jesus, and you read through the Gospels, you know, there's... There's some things that really kind of pop out to you about this Jesus that we sang about today. And the one of the things that really grabs me the most is the attitude of Christ Jesus. As I read through the Gospels over and over again, I am just so drawn to the attitude and more specifically the servant-like attitude of Christ. That just draws. I know you, you have met some people who, um, that you are drawn to, and, and probably you're drawn to them because of the kind of, that same kind of attitude. You know, they are there to help you. You just feel that from them. You feel that they've got your best interests in mind and that they really genuinely want to serve you. And there's something about a person like that that actually just draws you to themselves. And that's, this, that's Jesus for me. 
You know, when I read in the Gospels about Jesus and I see this servant attitude of him, that just draws me into him. In fact, Jesus himself said to his disciples that that was the very reason that he came. Mark chapter 10, verse 47 is where I really began to, you know, seek God and put this message together. It's kind of the, what kind of catapult me into this message that won't be our text. But it's just as Jesus says to his disciples that he came into this world not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And I read that. I go, yeah, God, that's, that's it right there. That's what makes you so different. That's what really draws me to you. That's what really shines, is that kind of attitude. And throughout Scripture, over and over again, we see this servant attitude of Christ depicted. In fact, there are so many Scriptures, I couldn't give you them all. Although in, in your small groups, you'll look at some of those uh, scriptures and really trace what it means to walk in the light and things like that. that will give you a whole bunch of them. But today, I want us to go back to our text that we read uh, during communion this morning. So during communion, I, I began to talk about Jesus serving his, his disciples, washing their feet, and then he serves them, breaks the bread with them, and, and, and tells them that, uh, you know, that he's about to lay his life down. If you go with me back to Luke chapter 22 this morning, we'll continue reading after the cup. And, and it says that after supper he took another cup of, of wine and he said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, uh, an agreement to confirm my blood which was to be poured out as a sacrifice to you. And that's where we left off in communion. Then, as they were still sitting around the table, and, and Christ has given them that, that commandment to do this in remembrance me, he then says, but here at this table, sitting among us as a friend, is a man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him. Of course, we know he's talking about Judas there, but the disciples are, were sitting around that table and they began to, to ask each other which of them would do such a thing. Can you imagine? And as they were kind of discussing that, then their conversation somewhere in that midst begins to turn to a conversation that they had had other times before. And they began to argue amongst themselves about who would be the greatest among them. I don't know how a conversation turns that way, but I guess it was on their minds constantly. Who's going to be the greatest? And Jesus told them, in the world, the kings and the, and the great men lord it over the people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you will take the lowest rank. And the leader should be like the servant. Who is more important? The one who sits at the table or the one who serves? Of course, the common answer, of course, would be the one who serves. The one who sits at the table, of course. But not here, Jesus says. Not here, for I am among you as one who serves. Jesus differentiates that. He says, but not in his kingdom, that he is among you as one who serves. We just pray for a brief second. God, we've just been confronted with this paradox, something that is kind of different from what we see in the world, but is in your kingdom. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would help us today to grasp this paradox, this, this upside-down thinking, this kingdom-mindedness, and let it grab hold of our hearts and our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. I love his words here. Among you, it will be different. See, God is calling us to be different. He's calling us to shine like him. To have that servant attitude. And I'm hoping that these lights that will be up here during this sermon series will kind of remind us that 
we are to stand out. How many of you noticed that there was something different as soon as you walked in here? You saw those, you go, wow, I wonder what the lights are doing up there, right? And, and you know, and I'm hoping that as we explore the servant attitude of Jesus, that it will either start a flame, or maybe there is already a flame there, and you already kind of know yet you, you are serving. And then I'm hoping that it will fuel that and cause us to shine even brighter as we go through this. Because there's something about that, you know, people who get a hold of this truth and shine like Jesus that really makes a difference in our world. It attracts us to it. You know, you may have noticed that Pastor Bob's not here today. Okay, he, he'll be back next Sunday and he's on vacation, so we could talk about him behind his back. Right? You won't tell anybody, right? But one of the things I have found most attractive, that kind of sounds weird. Okay. Uh, anyways, let's go with it. About Pastor Bob is that he, I've seen in him a servant attitude. You know, many times if you've been here during an event, you know, Pastor Bob, he's not h- off hiding somewhere. He's in there serving and, uh, and, you know, picking up dirty dishes and doing what, whatever needs to be done. And that has been one of the things that I have really enjoyed about working alongside with him. And throughout our congregation, I see many people. In fact, there's some people back there right now who are not, you know, just they're back there serving. And that is something that is awesome. And many of you either serve in the church. We have a lot of volunteers that serve in Or you're serving in some way outside the church. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. And, and through this series, I just want to encourage you not to lose heart at serving. Or if you, if you kind of, you know, it's been a while and somehow you got out of serving, to some way get back into letting your light shine for Christ. And that can be done in so many ways. God is so wonderful in, in, in uh, allowing us to serve in many different ways. There, there's a whole group, there's a number of people in our congregation that I've gotten to know over the years that you immigrated to Canada and yet you're, there's still a part of your heart that knows the needs in your home country. And a number of people will take, take trips some of them several times a year or once a year, um, and you go back to your home country to serve and to be a blessing. And you bring funds and you bring supplies and, and you minister to the needs of people so that your light may shine there and you're being used by God. And, and it's those type of things that I really, you know, I just find those things very attractive. I find those things, you know, I draw to those type of, of people. I find that is just, because I find that's Christ-like. It's what draws me to Christ. And when I see God's people acting like that, it, there's something about it that resonates in my heart saying, yes, you shining for Jesus. Yes, that's what we want to be like. And that's what God wants his church to be like. We, we've been uh, coming up with some theme verses for our series. And the theme verse for this uh, series that we're heading into is Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And it just says, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know what? I can end right there, and that basically says it all. In fact, I always do a summary for my message, saying, well, how can I say this message in one sentence? I just use the theme verse this time, because basically that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to let our light so shine before others that they would see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. You know, this world is a dark place, isn't it? I see you're, you're agreeing with me because, you know, you, we, we, we see it all the time. The, the darkness, the corruption, the problems that are in our world. And, and, you know, it's everywhere. Even as I travel uh, different countries, I've talked to people and they often say, you know, our country has so much. But it's the corruption, and the darkness here that really stops us from going forward. And Jesus came into this world as a light. 
And then he invites us to follow his example and to identify with him. And so much that he calls us children of light. And that as we follow his example, we make those right choices. We follow his example. We walk in the light. You've heard that saying in scripture as well. We begin to live with this purpose of shining for Jesus. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about what does it mean to have a servant attitude like Christ this morning. I want to look at a, at a few uh, things. I think it's so important because, truthfully, I think if we're not careful, we can get accustomed to the darkness. Have you ever going to, you know, you walk out at night and you, at first, or you walk into a dark room and at first you can't see anything, right? And it's so dark and it bothers you. But after a while, if you linger there, stay in the darkness long enough, your eyes become adjusted to the darkness. And it doesn't quite bother you quite so much anymore. And I think that's happening in the church, that we get accustomed to the darkness. And it doesn't quite bother us as much anymore. But God wants us to let the light shine. Not to be satisfied with living in darkness, but to shine so the whole world can see the Father, can glorify the Father through our good works. So let me just give you a couple key thoughts this morning as we start this series off. First one, I, I believe that what it means to have a servant attitude like Jesus is for us to embrace a new identity, to embrace a new identity in Christ. See, Jesus, when he, was, when he, when he returned after he had been resurrected from the grave, and you know, the next meeting he had with his disciples was also in a, in a room. This time the, he appeared to them, the doors were locked, and they were hiding away, afraid for their lives behind these closed doors. And Jesus appears to them and he says, Peace be with you, of course. First of all, when you, after seeing Jesus die on the cross and he appears to you. But after that, he says to them, As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. So he tells them to have peace, but then he, he instructs them that just as the Father sent me, and he had said earlier that he had been sent into the world not to be served, but to serve. He says, just as the Father had sent me, I'm sending you into the world. And so we are commissioned to have this new identity. And, and Paul says in 2 Corinthians that, that we are now ambassadors. We are called ambassadors for Christ. That we now go into this world and we represent the light. Remember, Jesus is the light. And, and if we are representing him, we are representing the light to this dark world. And this dark world needs us to shine. It needs us to represent Jesus Christ, the light. It needs you to represent Christ. It needs the love that you know. It needs the hope that you have. It needs the message that you have. So as ambassadors, we go and we represent, just like an ambassador from another country would go and represent their, their country in, in this foreign land. You and I are in this foreign land, and we are ambassadors to Christ, and we represent him. You know, occasionally the queen will send a representative to represent her at an event, maybe over, overseas, and, and that person doesn't represent themselves. When they go, they represent the queen. Well, Christ Jesus has sent you, and each and every one of you represents the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to this world. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, then you have now taken on that name tag as ambassador for Christ. I don't know if any of you ever have, um, you know, maybe gone to a conference or maybe you wear a name tag at work. And have you ever forgotten to take off that name tag? And you maybe went to, to a store. This has happened to me. 
and you go in the store and, and, you know, everyone's so friendly. They're calling you by your name and you're wondering, you know, what's going on. And then you get to the, you know, you're walking out of the store and, oh, I forgot to take off my name tag. So everyone knew who I was. Well, everyone should know who you are. No matter where you go, they should know and identify you as an ambassador. Another word for ambassador is a representative, right? And when I, when I picture that mind, representative, in my mind, when I picture that word in my mind, I, I, I see the, it broken up to, to re-percent. A representative, someone who represents over and over again that we represent Jesus to people in our actions, in our attitudes, in, in our words. We take time. Uh, our, our, we, we over and over again, time after time, we are representing Christ as his ambassadors. We're representing Jesus. And that's our identity. And that's who we have been called to be. We're called to be his ambassadors. The, the, the second thing that I see and believe that we are, um, if we want to have the servant attitude of Christ, I'm, I'm sure I'm only scratching the surface, but you know, another thing that comes to mind is, is the choices we make. If we want to have a servant attitude, we have to make new choices. You know, and that's part of this whole new life that we, that we embark. None of us is perfect, and we're all striving to be different, but we always have to, we have to look at the choices we make. You know, a lot of life is about the choices we make, isn't it? You know, it's about, you know, how we, we see ourselves, our attitude, and, uh, and, it, and it's about the choices that we make. In, you know, each morning when you wake up, you make some choices, Right? And you know uh, when you've made good choices and when you've made bad choices. You make a choice sometimes on the attitude that you're going to have going into the day. And that can make all the difference. And, you know, our choice is that we would choose every day to live in the light. We would, that we would choose to imitate God in everything that we do. Secondly, so the second point is to make new choices, to imitate God in everything that we do. Um, something that has come kind of popular around is these painting classes. Anybody ever seen them? So maybe some of you have been to one of these, these painting classes. Now, some of you probably got to thought, I could never paint. I could never make a painting. They show you a copy, but it's, it's amazing and if you go to one of these classes, and Esther and I did this one, one time, and I think the ladies have hosted a couple of those. You know, even if you have no artistic, um, you know, abilities at all, you can paint. It's pretty incredible. Most of the people that walk out of those rooms walk out going, wow, I didn't think I could do that. But you follow step by step. The instructor shows you. You know, you start with this... Just make a circle in the middle of your canvas. Now I want you to, to make these wiggly lines coming up from the bottom of your page. Okay, and now you're going to add this and that. And, and step by step, you begin to make this painting. And hopefully you're proud of it or it just sits in the back of your closet, uh, you know, for years to come. But you are able to do this because you're imitating and the scriptures tell us that we are to imitate. So I don't know if we can put that up on the, on the screen, the point number two. Yeah, to make new choices, to imitate. Ephesians chapter 5 is where, I, where I'm getting this text, is that we are to imitate God in everything that we do. And, and it goes on to talk about how we should live. And, you know, I get myself in a lot of trouble when I begin to tell people how they should live. You know, I get nasty emails and stuff. No one likes people telling them how they should live, you know. Yeah, young adults particularly, but that's another point. Um, but no one, you know, even us older, you know what, I'll take that back. Why am I picking, you know what, 
There are a lot of older people who don't like being told how, how to live as well. I don't like to be told how to live. You know, we get defensive. But rather than me tell you, let me just read it from the Bible. You can take it up with God, okay? It talks about that we are to imitate God. Therefore, in everything that you do, because you are his dear children. You belong to God. You're his. And so he wants you to, to live like him. Live a life that is filled with love, following the example of Christ. So Jesus served. He came to this world to serve. And whose example are we to follow? Jesus. And so we should serve. So following the example of Christ, he loved us. He offered himself as a sacrifice for us, which was pleasing aroma to God. And here's where it gets a little bit painful and might confront some of us. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. You know, I've seen stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes. These are not for us. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankful, thanksgiving, thankfulness to God. It's what we were doing earlier today, offering thanks to God. It goes on to just to, to talk about those things that, you know, are of the world and that we shouldn't be fooled, that there will be a judgment for those types of disobediences before God. And that we are not to participate in those things. For once, verse, chapter eight, verse 8 says, For once you were filled with darkness, but now you have the light from the Lord. So live as people of the light. The choices that you make, make them the choices that follow the example of Christ because you are people of the light. And as I, I said earlier, I think... Because we live in such a dark world, we're getting too accustomed to it, church. Do you hear me this morning? And I'm, I'm speaking to myself. You know, i got to be careful that I'm just not getting so used to, you know, the profanity that is uh, streaming out there. The, the things that, are, that, that, are, that I'm confronted with day after day in our media and in the world that I'm not just getting desensitized. That the enemy is just, you know, that's that whole frog in the pot thing where, where the heat is just being turned up and you're not noticing it. The world is getting darker and darker and maybe we're just not noticing it. But God says, it's not, not so with you, disciples of Christ, that we are to be Children of the light. That we are to, to not embrace the standards of this world, but we are to embrace the standards of our God. And in the, in the standards of our God, you know, they are different. Let me just give you a couple of standards of greatness, for instance, what Jesus was talking about with his disciples. See, man measures greatness by being served. You know, we, we, we like to be served. That kind of... It goes to our natural, you know, nature of man, you know, people, having people serve us. But that's not how God measures greatness, Jesus tells his disciples. God measures greatness by serving. Man looks at what you can receive. Who can get the most stuff? God looks at greatness as who can give the most Man tries to humble others, wants to be the boss over everyone, humble them, have them lower than themselves. Where God calls greatness the one who humbles himself. And that's a lot to take in. I understand. But it's a different way of thinking. It's a paradox that God has called us to be because we are not of this world. We are to be different. And we are to shine our lights. And people are to be able to recognize us and look at us and go, there's something different. 
but I'm kind of drawn to them. I want to know what they have. Finally, this morning, let me give you one more point as we start this journey in talking about shine. What does it mean to have a servant's attitude? I believe that it is to live a life with new purpose. That we have new purpose in Christ Jesus. Every single believer in Christ is to live with a brand new mission. And that mission is to shine for Jesus. That as we accept him and we fall in love with Jesus and and we accept him to be our Lord and Savior, that that we take hold of that, that verse that we read together earlier, that let your light so shine before men so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now it's not through works that we are saved. We are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. But once you are saved, it's through works that we demonstrate that Jesus has made a difference in our lives. Paul says it this way in Acts chapter 26. It says, we have proven that we have changed by the good things that we do. We show the world that we are different, that we have changed through the good works that we are are doing. James said, by faith, without works is dead. And that we show our faith by my works, he said. I show my faith by my works. And people will see our faith in Christ Jesus through the actions, through the works, through our giving, through our our servant-type attitudes. So let me encourage you. As you, as you go from this place and the, and the worship team just comes to lead us in one more song, begin to think, how can I shine this week? God is going to take you into some pretty dark places. I know it. Some of you have some pretty dark workplaces. Some of you have some dark family situations. Some of you are going to be led into some dark situations. But you're not led in there just to be used to the dark. God is leading you there to shine his light in that dark situation. To let your light shine. There is a writer, uh, G. J. or G. K. Um, Ch- Chesterton, I think it is. Anyways, I had never heard of him before, but he seems to be fairly famous. But I came across this quote, and I thought it was great. It says, We do not want a church that will move with the world. We want a church that will move the world. I'm going to be looking up more of his writing. But that really spoke. I said, you know, God, that's the kind of church you want. Yeah, there's a, a tidal wave of things in this world that try to move the church and for us just to accept the ways of this world, us as individuals, just to kind of say, yeah, the world is changing. I guess we just got to kind of move with it. But I think God is calling his church back to being a shining light that will actually affect the darkness in this world. There's too much natural light in here for me to ask them to turn off the lights and to do something. But I think you I think you get the idea. You've ever been in a dark room and one person either strikes a match or turns on the light and, and it does make a bit of a difference in a dark room when one person shines a light. But you know if you got into a dark room if we could we could cover all the windows and make it pitch dark in here and and one of us turned on a light and then someone else turned on a light and and then every one of us you know, pulled out our cell phones and turned on a light. It would make a gigantic difference in the world. And I think it's like that. Our world is a dark place. But if each one of us will shine our light, we can make a big difference in the world for Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to allow us just a moment as the band leads us, just for us to kind of think about where Christ is calling you to to shine 
maybe to shine brighter than you have before and to make an effort for him. Bless the Lord.